Hi everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. Recently in our project, I was asked to build a custom badge, something that looks just like this. Something that can handle numbers, something that could grow and shrink over time. And in this episode, I wanna show you how to use core graphics, core animation, do some really cool effects and build your own custom badge. Make sure to stay to the end because we're gonna show you how to do it with some really cool animations. But let's get in there and figure out and see the basic mechanics behind building a really cool custom badge. Now, before we get to the fancy stuff, I just wanna show you a really cheap and cheerful way to create a simple badge. And that is using a simple label and button. You can simply create a label or a button, style them up, give them a corner radius, set their colors, align the text, and you can design a really nice, elegant looking badge just using these simple controls. The label's good for, I find, about two digits. Once you get beyond there, the label starts to get a little bit wonky, <clears throat> and you can see how it's gonna have, you're gonna have to do some extra work if you wanted to add some padding to the ends of that. The advantage of the button is you have a UI edge inset where you can add a little bit of padding to the left and to the right, and then it can handle larger numbers, like more than two digits, while still looking good at the smaller digits like this. So that's just one of the advantages of the button. Then you can just add those to your view, set it up with auto layout, and do all your plain good old auto layout stuff here. In this case, I'm just centering the label I'm giving it a height and a width of greater than or equal to the diameter, which I think I made 30. And for the button, it's the same thing. I'm just positioning this right underneath this label, centering it also on X, giving it a height and a width. And that's basically all there is to designing a really simple badge using plain old UI kit objects. Using plain old UI kit objects. Now the next step up in terms of fanciness is to make this some kind of badgeable process where we can add a badge to any given view. For example, take this image view here. Here I've got a GitHub vectorized image view and I'd like to add a badge to it, preferably somewhere in the upper right hand corner. Well, we can do that by making a protocol called badgeable, doing some work in there and then adding that badge like this in the upper uh, right hand corner. And the way we can do that is by just like this. We can define a badgeable protocol. We can then make an extension on a UI view of the protocol badgeable. And then in here, when we call badge, this is where we're gonna take that button we did in the previous example and add it to the existing view. So in this case, we're gonna take our image view, which is gonna be badgeable, and we're just going to create a plain old button because I like the button in this case gave it a color of blue, and we're gonna add that badge to the subview of the image that we're working on. So in this case, we're adding this button as a subview to the image view here, and then just laying it out again with plain old, uh, good old auto layout. And in this case, I'm just giving it a height and a width of 30, and also a leading anchor over here, which is gonna line with the trailing anchor of the image view, and I gave it minus 24 just to bring it back a bit. And then the bottom anchor, I'm just putting the bottom anchor of the badge right at the top of the image view with a constant of 16. That's gonna pull it down a bit. And I've just empirically decided this looks like a nice place for the badge. Of course, you can play with this. You can adjust these numbers, but it's just a nice way to give a badge to any given UI view. Now for a lot of projects out there, if all you need is a badge with a number, this will get you probably 80% of the way there. It's nice, it's clean, it's simple, and it works. But if you want something more advanced and you wanna get into more dynamic resizing and potentially work with some core animation, you may need to get a little bit more sophisticated. Let's take a look at an example of something I found out there and how we could go that extra mile and take that extra step. So I started Googling around, looking for a more sophisticated alternative, and I found one. There's a really nice pod out here called Badge Hub, which has some really nice examples of how to do exactly what I wanted, add this badge effect to your app. 
Now, don't worry, we're not just going to use this pod and just say we're done and declare victory and get patches going. Although this is a fine pod and I totally recommend you use it. I really want to understand though, how did they solve the problem of making the badge appear and placing it yourself? Because there's basically three things we need to do. One, we need to figure out how to take any view and make the red circle appear, in this case, in the upper right-hand corner. Two, we need to figure out how do we get a number in there, which is gonna be for us just a plain label. And then three, how do you make the badge grow as the amount of numbers in the badge increases from one to two to three to four digits, in other words, the order of magnitude. So we're gonna take this pod, break it down into its bare basics and see how to build this from scratch. Okay, so what I have here is a bare bones demo of how the badge actually works. And all we have here is an object called Badge Hub. This is from the pod, but this is a stripped down version taking out a lot of the magic. And then basically we just have an image view, which you see in the screen here. And our goal is to get that badge, that red circle with that number one in the upper right hand corner. Now the way it works with this badge view is basically you create the object pass in the image you want to add the badge to, and it takes care of the rest. So for us, we have an image view, which is this nice little GitHub image here. We're just pushing it or putting it specifically somewhere on screen with a CG rec using core graphics. And then down here, all we do is we create our badge hub, pass it the image that we want to have the badge added to, set the count and add it to our sub view. That's it. So you can see with the number one, we get a really nice badge that looks like that. If I make it two digits, in, in other words, increase the order of magnitude, the 11 can still fit within a circle. But as you see, one of the challenges or one of the things with building your own custom badge is we need to resize that badge and make it stretch as the number grows. And this is consistent with how Apple handles badges on their notification system. I did some tests and I wanted to see what it looks like when they grow their badging. And this is the pattern they follow. They take the circle, they expand its width, and that's basically how you can make a badge that can handle a larger number. So that at a high level is what we're shooting for. Let's now jump to the code and see how it actually works. Okay, so step one for us is we're gonna focus on just getting that red circle up there and to the right. That's all we're gonna do. And all the code that we need to do that is right here. I'm in a class called Badge Hub, which contains a badge view, which is gonna be that red circle up there. And this is all the code that it takes to put that red circle up there relative to the image. Now, the way this works is Badge Hub takes the image or whatever view you pass in and basically calculates its frame and then builds a new frame for the red circle up here to the right. And it all happens with this line of code right here called that frame. So when we initialize this badge view, we get passed in our image view. We go set view that creates the red circle here with this badge view sets its background to be red. And then it takes the view that we pass in and says, okay, what frame are you at? And how do I put that red circle up and to the right relative to you? That's really what's going on here. We're just taking this frame that you see passed in, doing some math and then creating a new frame for a circle up here and to the right. And the key to understanding this is the origin or frame of reference we're working from. For example, if we came in here and I just took this X value and I put it to its origin. This is a really good way just to experiment and see what's going on. If I ran this now, we would see that the origin here for the red circle would be up and in this left-hand corner. And this is consistent with how we know core graphics works. Everything is relative. And don't worry, I'll leave some notes down below if you need a refresher on core graphics and core animation, which we're gonna get into later at the end of the episode. But basically you can see how the origin of that red circle is here. So we just need to do some math on the frame to get it over to the right and up a bit up here. So basically the, what this looks like graphically is we're just gonna take this frame that's passed in. We're gonna do some math. We're gonna calculate the X value by taking the frames size and width. How big is the image we're passing in? 
subtracting the width of our circle, which in this case is a constant equal to 30. And we're going to subtract 30 by about two thirds, in other words, minus 10. And that's going to give us an x value of 76. So starting from the origin over here, our x value is going to be 76 points over, and that's going to be that x value right there. Then for the y, we just want to nudge it a little bit up, which for us is going to be in the negative y value. So again, we take our diameter of our circle, 30. These are just empirically derived numbers. Divide it by 3, which gives us a number of about, about minus 10. And that's how we get the point or position, the xy value of our red circle up and to the right, in this case, over 76 and minus 10. That's how they get the circle up there. They reset the frame by going frame set, set circle at frame at. That's all they do right here. They take the red circle, set its frame to this calculated value, and then they just take, the way they make it a circle is they take that red view, which is a rectangle, and they just apply a corner radius of half the height. So we're not actually drawing a circle in core graphics. We're taking a plain red square, giving it a corner radius, and setting its frame manually like this, and then actually adding the red circle as a subview to the view passed in and then bringing it to the front and setting the view is equal to itself. That's it. That's how we get the red circle up and to the right just by setting this frame and doing some basic math to calculate its x, y value. Okay, next let's talk about how they get a number to appear in that red circle. In other words, a label. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add a little more functionality we're going to set the count to be equal to one and then let's go in there and see how they actually got that to work so basically there's two things going on one is they added a counter to track what number would you like to appear in your badge and then two they added a plain old ui label as a stored variable with an observer and basically whenever we set that label after setting our count we're just going to set the text on the label just like this to whatever the count is now watch how they actually got the label to appear in the circle, and this is really cool. They create a plain old UI label, but look what they do. They pass in the frame, the frame that we have already calculated for our red circle. This is how they get the label to appear exactly in the middle of the red circle. They just set the label's frame to be the circle's frame. Then you can set all the properties you want on your label just like this, its color, its text, everything like that. Then you're gonna add it to the view you passed in, in this case, our image view, bring it to the front. And that's, that's basically it. That's all you need to do to get that label to appear in the red circle there. So now we can come in here. We're free to change that label to be whatever we want. In this case, we can make it something really big. If we make it two numbers like this, that's still gonna fit within the circle, that's not a problem. Now watch what happens though, if we make it bigger. Let's take a look now and see what magic they do next in order to make that red circle expand its width to accommodate a number of a larger magnitude. Okay, so the trick to dealing with making the badge grow as the order of magnitude increases in your numbers is as follows. Basically, by keeping track of the number of digits, for example, if it's one or two, we know a perfect circle is going to be big enough to fit both numbers. But as soon as we get to a larger number, in other words, if we get to three, four or five digits, we know we've got to rechange or resize our frame in order to accommodate the larger text. So how do we do that? Well, there's a really nice way we can do it by basically just keeping track of our order of magnitude and then calculating a new frame based on its size. Works something like this. In this resize to fit digits, the way badge V works is basically you take the count, you figure out your order of magnitude, how many numbers you've got, and then based on that, you calculate a new frame width. So you can take your initial frame width, multiply it by the order of magnitude you have minus one times 0.3 plus one. This is kind of an empirically determined number, and that's gonna give you a new width just large enough to fit all of the numbers. So in this case, if our original diameter of our circle was 30, we can increase it to 39 by doing that calculation up here and expanding the width of the frame. 
then the one other thing we need to tweak is the X coordinate. In other words, now that we've got a larger frame around our badge, we just need to move it a little bit this way to adjust the X coordinate position. And that's what happens here. They take the frame's original origin X and they basically subtract the new frame width minus the initial frame width divided by two because there's two sides. So we don't want to move it entirely over the delta of the new frame. We want to move it over that much divided by two to still kind of make it center. And that's basically how they deal with the order of magnitude problem. They calculate a new width, they calculate a new X value, and that's what allows it to grow those new numbers in size. Okay, next, let's get to the fun stuff, animations. How do they work with these badges? Well, Badge Hub adds a really nice set of animations we can use. Let's take a look at this first one called Pop, which is whenever we increment our badge, it gets this nice pop. The way this one works is basically a whole bunch of math and constants and basically animating this thing in and out. So basically what you see here is a whole bunch of constants are, that are defined, uh, things defining the pop ratio, how far it should pop out, how far it should pop in. These are all just empirically defined numbers you're not expected to know on your own, but this is what uh, this pod came up with. And basically then it's using core animation, a series of animations, all combined within an animation group, and basically just chaining them all together like this. Now if you're brand new and this all looks foreign to you, uh, don't worry, core animation is a different beast. I'll be sure to leave a link down below. I've got an introduction to core animation video, which will really help you understand what's going on here. But basically what we're doing is we're defining a series of frames. In this case, we're changing the quarter radius. We're defining start times, values that we'd like to move to and from. This is called a basic animation. And then we basically just chain these things together by putting them in something called an animation group. And when we animate them like this, by basically changing the frames and the center, that's what gives this a nice pop effect. It's a lower level framework. Don't worry if you don't completely understand it, but it is really cool and powerful. And it's part of my motivation for wanting to get in here was to understand how they did this. And that's the, that's the pop. Another nice little animation they have in here is called the bump. In this one, it just bumps the badge up. Why a certain amount every time you increment it. This is a little bit of a simpler animation. This one basically just chains together a series of animations, bumping it a different Y distance every time you hit that, uh, every time the count goes up in the bump. For example, initially we can bump it by some first bump distance, an empirically defined distance, which probably moves it up five or six pixels. And then we bump it back down to zero. Then we bump it up a second distance, a little bit different than the first, and then bump it back down. And that's what gives it that nice little gravity-like effect. You can see there's actually two, two bumps going on in there. And again, this is core animation chained together, just determining different time intervals and bump distances. Now I know I've gone to this rather fast and the only way to really understand this is to get in there and play with it yourself. All the source code is available. If you clone my repo and you go down into badge hub workspace, uh, that's the one you wanna to open to open up this example and run all these examples. And then also on my repo, I do have kind of a, a text write-up of what we talked about here. Do check that out. You can find that under custom badge on the readme file there. Okay, well there you have it folks, your very own custom badge. I hope you didn't find that too scary. What I found really valuable about this exercise is one, I learned a lot by taking a look at how someone else solved this problem. And two, I recommend you do that too. Before you just instantly bring a pod in, I find it really good to take a look and see how these things work and see if you can avoid bringing in the entire pod framework itself. I have nothing against Badge Hub. I think it's a great pod. Uh, I would definitely use it on a project, but I didn't need all the functionality they had here. I really like understanding the pods I use and some are complex enough that I just have to bring them in, but others like this, I can just extract what I need and use it myself and really understand it. So I hope you find that valuable as a learning technique. I know I learned a lot by analyzing how this one did its work. So I encourage you to try that out and uh, just keep learning and growing. And come on back, hit like, hit subscribe. We'll continue this journey together and we'll keep leveling up our iOS skills. Okay, thanks so much for coming everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.